Welcome back to Ultimate Movie Recaps. Thanks for supporting us. Today I am showing a 2007 period epic film titled Mongol, The Rise of Genghis Khan. Watch out for the spoilers, just enjoy and take care. The plot of the film takes place in the year 1192. The Tongut dynasty ruled over the present-day provinces of northwest China, previously known as the Tongut Kingdom. During this time there were various Mongolian tribes commanded by their respective chiefs, known as the Khans. The rivalry between the tribes and their desire for power resulted in countless claims, conflicts, and fatalities. There are no rules in the Mongol domain, and the people desperately needed a supreme Khan to lead and unite them. At the start of the film, we see Yeshuge, a Khan who rules over a small tribe in the west. He is seen traveling along with his soldiers and his nine-year-old son Temujin in order to find a wife for his child. They stop for the night at a friend's tribe to rest. After some time, Temujin is seen overlooking his horse when a girl named Bord approaches him and inquires about his name. Temujin introduces himself and tells her about the trip's objective. Bord boldly declares that he should marry her after learning that he is looking for a bride. Temujin's father wishes to bring home a bride from a more powerful tribe for political reasons. However, in response to his son's constant requests, Yeshuge permits him to select someone from the friend's tribe instead. Temujin is instructed to look for a girl with strong legs before selecting her, as his father believes that only a girl with strong legs can keep her guy satisfied. Temujin chooses board as instructed. Their marriage is authorized, but they can only live together after five years. Temujin vows to return soon and presents board with a necklace to remember him. Yeshuge and the men stop for a rest on their way back to their village. They are alert, as a rival tribe's leader and his soldiers are only a few yards away. As a symbol of peace, the rival Khan dispatches his soldier with a bowl of milk. Yeshuge reciprocates by sending a bowl of juice. As they can't trust their opponents, Yeshuge's right-hand man proposes that he let the servant sip the milk first. But Yeshuge refuses to do so because he does not want to break the trust of his opponent, and he himself drinks that milk. He and the other Khan also finish the bowl. They continue their journey after a while, but Yeshuge's chest begins to pain after a few minutes. He dies after falling off the horse. The opponents clearly took advantage of his compassion and poisoned him. Temujin goes to his father, but his followers are unconcerned. Mongols have a tradition of only following powerful leaders. Now that their leader has died, their primary concern is to find a new Khan, rather than avenge the previous one. In the next scene, we see Temujin and his mother attending Yeshuge's burial. Kargutai, the right-hand man of Yeshuge, takes all the sheep and goats that Yeshuge owns. This makes Temujin's mother angry and curses him saying that one day his son will kill him. Kargutai realizes this may become true in the near future, so he decides to kill Temujin. However, they measure his height, which does not reach the upper section of a cartwheel. Temujin's life is preserved since Mongols do not kill children according to tradition. Kargutai, on the other hand, vows to return next winter when Temujin's height increases. Temujin has nowhere to hide when winter arrives. He recalls his father teaching him about God Tungri, who will assist him in times of need. As a result, he travels to the sacred mountain to pay his respects. However, on the way, he slips into a frozen lake and nearly drowns to death. However, Jamika, a young child his age, saves him. He and his younger brother welcome Temujin into their home and feed him. Temujin thanks the brothers for saving his life. He offers to be Jamika's biological brother. They mix their blood with milk and consume it to express their loyalty to one another. Kargutai and his people confront them the next morning, who are still searching for Temujin to kill him. They kidnap him and take him back to the tribe. However, Temujin's height hasn't risen much since the last time, therefore, he must be held hostage until he grows. Every day, a compassionate old man feeds him and assists him with his ailments. They measured his height again a few days later, but it had not grown. Suddenly, it begins to rain, and everyone retreats to their shelters. The old man uses this chance to set Temujin free. The youngster runs as far as he can with the wooden plank still wrapped around his neck. He travels to the mountains to seek assistance from the god Tungri. Temujin notices a white wolf beside the god's monument, and the wooden plank is magically broken seconds later. The scene shifts to 1186 and Temujin has matured into an adult, yet he remains on the run from Targutai and his people. They capture him and imprison him in a similar wooden plank after a year-long search. He has grown tall enough to match the height reference this time, therefore, his odds of survival are slim. Kargutai wants to see him beg for his life, but Temujin, being a proud man, refuses. As a result, Targutai decides to torture him slowly rather than kill him instantly. The elderly man who helped Temujin years ago feeds him again. 
He begs Temujin not to kill him when he returns to avenge the treatment he is receiving. Hargitai comes to Temujin alone when it becomes dark and mocks him. Because everyone is busy, Temujin seizes the chance to assault and kills his opponent by repeatedly hitting him with a wooden plank. He then escapes from there and is once again safe. Temujin is ready to reclaim his clan and become Khan, but first he must bring his bride. He visits his in-laws tribe for the first time since he was nine years old. Bort has matured into a strong and gorgeous woman. She explains that she has been looking for him since she last saw him. After several years, the two return to his mother and sister. They are warmly welcomed by the family. But disaster occurs when they are ambushed by the Merkit tribe one day. Temujin's father took his mother from the Khan of Merkit tribe a long time ago. He pledged vengeance and has come to steal Bort from Temujin. The pair tries to flee, but Temujin is shot with an arrow and Bort is taken as the rival Khan's wife. When Temujin recovers, he realizes he must reclaim his wife, but he cannot do it alone. As a result, he visits his old blood brother, Jamika. Jamika had grown into the Khan of a strong tribe. He agrees to assist, but only after a year because he is preoccupied with other work. In the blink of an eye, a year passes, and the two head out with their army to attack the Merkit tribe. They kill all of their soldiers and plunder the place before discovering a pregnant board in one of the cottages. She murdered a man, whose body is now lying next to her. Temujin promptly claims the infant and takes Bort back. The troops celebrate their victory at night. Temujin has amassed a sizable following by this point. They urge him to disperse the robbed livestock, and Temujin, unlike most Khans, takes only 10% for himself and distributes the rest to his troops. He even offers more goods to the families of the fallen soldiers. When two of Jamika's people notice this, they decide to join Temujin's tribe. Jamika has no say because the Mongols are free to choose their own Khans. But it's clear that he sees this as a betrayal. Temujin's men notice a man attempting to steal their horses in the following scene. They pursue him and accidentally kill him. It was then revealed that the thief was Jamika's younger brother. After the tragedy, Jamika decides to kill Temujin, oblivious to the fact that he is a blood brother. He joins forces with another tribe and attacks Temujin's tribe. Temujin understands that his people will lose the battle since they are vastly outnumbered. Nonetheless, he exiles the women and children and forces the men to battle with all their might. Temujin is eventually apprehended despite murdering several opponents. Jamika still refers to him as brother and advises him to beg for forgiveness. He doesn't want to murder someone who still has strength and pride in him. Instead, he turns him into a slave and sells him to the brokers. Temujin and the rest of his men are forced to walk several miles over the desert to reach the city that is ruled by the Tongut dynasty. After that, they are left in the open for people to inspect and purchase as they see fit. One day, a senior official from the Tongut dynasty comes to the market and expresses an interest in purchasing Temujin. His advisor monk, on the other hand, observes Temujin and realizes he is not the appropriate guy to enslave. He believes Temujin will eventually wipe out entire Tongut dynasty. The buyer simply chuckles at the statement and proceeds to purchase Temujin. He is then placed in a cage as a freak for everyone to see and mock. Every day, the monk comes to him and asks for forgiveness. One day Temujin makes an agreement with that monk and says that if he finds his wife then he will never harm this monastery in future when the time comes, and hands over the bone necklace to him. The monk passes out and dies while searching for Bort in the desert. Fortunately, he is discovered by Bort, who recognizes the necklace as she wore it for several years. She learns that her spouse is still alive and travels to the city in search of him. Since Temujin is on open display to the public, so she doesn't take long to find him. The same night, she bribes a guard and assists Temujin in fleeing. He is startled to see how much his son has grown and that Bort now has a second daughter. She had no choice but to be with another man in order to make ends meet and feed her children. Temujin appreciates her sacrifices even more and informs the small girl that he is her father. The four-member family returns to their house in the country and spend their time happily for a month. The kids adore their father and enjoy spending time with him. Bort then remarks one day that all Mongols are the same, they steal, rob, and kill. The remark is brief, yet it has a big impact on Temujin. He resolves to abandon his family in order to unite as many tribes as possible and establish regulations in the Mongol world, even if it means killing half the tribes. They must follow three essential rules, never kill women or children, fight the opponents till the end, and to never betray their cons. The scene shifts to the year 1196. Temujin has been able to assemble an army of Mongols on his side, uniting many tribes and forming his own huge tribe. The only thing standing in his way of becoming absolute emperor is Jamika, who also is supported by a huge army. Today, the two brothers are on the battlefield with their troops, ready for the ultimate battle. 
Temujin wanted to compromise with Jamaica instead of fighting because he considered him as his brother. War begins, and Jamaica quickly dispatches the first set of fighters. Temujin had planned the entire conflict, whereas Jamaica is more spontaneous, resulting in the deaths of many of his troops. Temujin triumphs after hours of hard fighting and captures the remaining enemy men, including Jamaica. Instead of being killed, the troops are taken in as Temujin's disciples. They are grateful and loyal to their new Khan as a result of the gesture. The old guy who earlier assisted him in escaping is appointed as the tribe's counselor. The only thing left to do is pass judgment on Jamaica. The brothers sit together and discuss how far they have come in life. Jamaica boldly admits that if he were in Temujin's position right now, he would have killed his adversary. This demonstrates that he and Temujin are not the same because Temujin permits him to flee. Temujin forgives him and lets him leave out of respect for his brother and the work he has put in to build an army. Then we learn that Bord and Temujin are now happily living together with both their children. Finally, it is declared that in 1206, Temujin was named Khan of all Mongols named Genghis Khan. He swept out the entire Tongut dynasty and rebuilt the kingdom as promised, but left the monastery alone at the request of the late monk. He then became the founder of the whole Mongol Empire, the world's largest contiguous empire in history. This marks the end of the movie and thanks for watching.